God, He lives forever, and He reigns in power and love. Let us bow down before Him. You are welcome to Sun Mind for Positive Life. My name is Sylvester Nyamalichi. In our last uh, two sessions, we've been talking about being joyful always. And today I'm going to conclude that teaching. I will discuss about the fact that joy is important. Joy is essential for you to be able to obtain something from God anything you want from God. It is with joy that will draw water from the wells of salvation. Joy is a display of faith. Joy is a manifestation of confidence in God. And joy is a twin to peace. Anywhere you find peace, you find joy. And anywhere you find joy, you find peace. So I want you to understand that joy is very essential. Joy is very, very important. And then we began to look at uh, um, how to overcome depression in case you're already depressed and you are saddened and discouraged about life because of what you are passing through. I want you to know that God, God loves you and God wants you victorious and God provided for your victory and I, He told us, look, I'm not calling you to a life that is free completely of challenges. Say, so in this world, you will have many troubles. But be of good cheer. That means be joyful, nevertheless. For I have already overcome for you. So his victory over troubles is our victory over troubles. His victory over Satan is our victory over Satan. His victory over sickness and death is our victory over sickness and death. So what 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 he achieved has become our portion through faith. And so I want you to understand that God wants you joyful, God wants you happy. And so, I want you to know that if you really want to overcome depression, you need to grow strong in faith in God. Grow strong in faith. Build up your faith. Remember, in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says that Jesus in his gospel introduced a new kind of righteousness. A righteousness that is from first to last by faith from first to last by faith you start by faith you are sustained by faith you get all the blessings manifested by faith you end at the feet of jesus by faith so it's a relationship based purely on faith and so when you have faith in him and in the promises he has made to you you will live above circumstances and situations and that means joy will always be manifestation so what do you do Develop faith. Dive into the Word. Get into the Word. Eat the Word. Feed on the Word. Meditate on the Word. Give your ears to the Word. There are many Christians who don't like the Word of God. They just want to pray. They want a man who will come and prophesy. They don't want a man who will teach them the ways of God. Prophecy is good, but prophecy can never take the place of the Word of God. In fact, you are supposed to judge prophecy using the Word of God. So if you are not conversant with the Scriptures, how do you judge prophecy? So you're going to be misled or you're going to believe a lie one day and it will cost you. Prayer is good, but prayer will not solve all the problems you have. Jesus said, if you, if you believe in me, you will continue in my words. And if you do, then you are truly my disciples. And then you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So what truth will set you free? Prayer can't set you free. Fasting won't set you free. It takes life to do that. So you need the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing God's word. So build faith. If the just shall live by his faith, not by another man's faith, not by the pastor's faith, not by the prophet's faith, but by his own faith, that means it, you have a responsibility to develop your own faith. And if you want to be joyful, you need to build faith because joy is only a manifestation of faith in God. 
And that's why I always tell people that praising God in the midst of adverse circumstances is the highest form of prayer. Because it takes great faith to be thanking God for what you have not seen. And yet you're thanking Him as if it has already happened. It takes faith. Great faith. Great faith. So build faith in God. Then, again, you need also to grow strong internally. And refuse to allow all those negative things that have been occupying your mind, those things you keep remembering, and every time you remember them, you know, you, the pain starts all over again. You keep relieving the pain. Each time you remember it, you relieve the pain. Grow strong internally and refuse to allow the remembrance of these incidents and these experiences to hurt you again. Never allow them to hurt you anymore. Never allow them to cause you pain. It's just memory. Just remember that's it, but no pain. You remember the incident, but no pain. You remember what he said, but you don't feel pain. You remember what happened, you don't feel pain. You remember the loss, you don't feel pain. That's exactly what God wants. Grow strong internally. Refuse to allow adverse situations to cause you pain again in your life. I can't do that for you. The only thing I can do is to educate you, minister to you, speak words to you, help build your faith. But the digesting of the word and the decision that will follow is yours. But I'm encouraging you to do it. Let the word of God settle in you. Find a place in you and call your faith on it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. Hold on to it so that you can be stable. So that no matter what you see, you can still be joyful. God said rejoice evermore. Rejoice. Then you need to confess the promises of God. That's the next point. Confess the promises of God. Confess the promises of God to yourself. As you say it, your ears hear you. And when your ears hear it, your brain will process it. And that will strengthen your faith, trigger more faith within you, and that will also come out of your mouth again. Because when you are full with the word, it will come out of your mouth. Remember, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you speak it again, your ears hear it, your mind, your brain processes it, and it strengthens your faith and confidence. So as you're doing this, you're fighting doubts. As you're doing this, you're fighting unbelief. As you're doing it, you're fighting the anxiety. Because you see, you keep reminding yourself of what God said. You speak the word, your brain hears, your ears hear it, your brain processes it, and your mouth speaks it again. You speak the word just like that. So your faith is being quickened all the time. You are being strengthened, you are being energized continuously by the word of God. So you fight worries, you fight anxiety, you fight fear through this. You fight doubt. So the word is essential. Keep confessing the word. Keep confessing that you are a son of God. Keep confessing that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Keep confessing that these problems are under you and you're not going to worry about it. Keep confessing that no matter what happens, you are triumphant. You are more than a conqueror. Keep confessing that everyone born of God overcomes the world and you are born of God and you have overcome this world. Keep confessing that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. And if God allowed you to, hang, to, uh, to experience this, it means you can handle this and you are going to overcome it. Keep confessing the word and keep believing it. Meditate on it. Let it strengthen your faith. Speak it again. Meditate on it. Let it strengthen your faith. Speak it again. And before you know what's happening, you are so full of the word that there's no iota of fear in you. Definitely joy will overflow you. You will come out of depression. The next point, continue steadfastly in prayer, the scripture says. No, I didn't say you shouldn't pray. Oh, but I'm saying that you need to watch your thoughts because prayer without believing is equal to doing nothing. Just wasted exercise. If you pray and you don't believe, you're wasting your time. So if you trust God, then reach out to Him. But if you want God to reach out to you or to, you want to receive from God, then you must relax. You must be at peace. You must be quiet while you're trusting God. You must be calm, at peace. God said, be still and know that I am God. When I'm at peace, then God can help me. That's the way it works. Be still and know that I am God. So until a man is still, he will not see the power of God. And being still means showing faith, relaxing, 
being calm, not fretting, not worried, not afraid, not troubled, not anxious about the situation. Showing great faith. Only then will God intervene. If you are not still, if you are not quiet while you're trusting God, you will not see God in action. And so if you are going to overcome depression, you need to fight fear. You need to fight anxiety. You need to fight worries. And the only way to do that is to build faith and manage your thoughts. Don't focus on the problem negatively. Focus rather on the promises of God. And God will bless you. This is very, very important. And so you need to continue steadfastly in prayer. Rejoicing in hope. That victory has already been won by the Lord himself. Victory has already been won by the Lord himself for you. The victory of Calvary is your victory. Jesus' victory over situations and circumstances of life is your victory. So while you pray, you must have it at the back of your mind that God has already given you the answer. Even though your eyes haven't seen it yet, even though your hands haven't touched it yet, God promised and God will keep his promise. So we rejoice in hope. While we pray, we rejoice in hope. In hope of the manifestation, in hope of divine visitation, in hope that God will not fail to keep his promises and God is not a man that he shall lie. If he made a promise, he will definitely keep it. And he has promised to be with you, he has promised to answer our prayers, to answer your prayers, to meet that need that you have. So don't allow your problems to weigh you down. Whatever has happened is past. Let the past go. Don't live in the past. Don't become a prisoner of the past. So we need to pray. Pray about it. If you're finding it difficult to put it behind you, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. So why I'm rejoicing in anticipation of the manifestation, I am also patient in going through the tribulation, the trial, the challenge. That means the, the trial has not, you know, exited my life yet. I'm still going through it. So I am patient in that tribulation. But in being patient, I am rejoicing in hope. So even in the midst of of the trouble I am expected to rejoice be joyful be happy it takes great understanding of the workings of God and of the life that we have and the plan of God for our lives in order to live in this realm and that's what I'm bringing to you in this program and I would like you, I'd like you to come every week let's learn together let's grow in knowledge together and I assure you your life will never be the same rejoicing in hope Patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. To continue steadfastly in prayer, that means I continually pray without giving up. So I am praying. While I am praying, I'm still going through the tribulation. I am patient. And when you are patient, you are not grumbling. When you are patient, you are not complaining. I am patient, not complaining. But at the same time, I am rejoicing because I know my Redeemer liveth. I know he will show up. I know he promised to be with me. I know he promised to deliver. So this is the way it goes. Rejoicing in hope, in anticipation of deliverance and help, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. There are no two ways about it. You don't grumble, you don't complain, you keep praying. You wait patiently on God, you don't grumble, you don't complain, and you are rejoicing because you know my Redeemer liveth. Deliverance is coming. God will show up. He will not fail. Don't go away. I'll be right back.
never come back. Now, like I was telling you, I want you to know that when you are looking to God for deliverance from a particular challenge that you're going through, God does not want you grumbling, doesn't want you to complain. He wants you to be patient in tribulation. And at the same time, he wants you to be rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope is the manifestation of your faith, a show of faith, a show of confidence in God. Lord, I have confidence in you. I trust in you. I believe in your word. I know you didn't lie. I know you're with me. I know you promised not to leave me nor forsake me. I know you promised to answer me when I call. And I'm rejoicing in anticipation of your deliverance. And I'm continuously in prayer. God wants you to rejoice. To see there's an opportunity to rejoice and give praise to God. In other words, He doesn't want you to be sorrowful. He doesn't want you to be sad. He doesn't want you to be sad. He doesn't want you to be sorrowful at all. He wants you to rejoice. When you fall into diverse temptations, when all kinds of troubles come your way, anytime a challenge comes your way, don't give up. Don't start grumbling. Don't start complaining. Rejoice. Because God is about to show forth in your life. God is about to demonstrate his power. He promised that you will be a display of the splendor of our God. And if you're going to be a display of his splendor, that means he's going to do the miracle that you, you can talk about to be. Miracle that you can testify to be. So he wants you to become a living testimony, a display. He wants to showcase you to the world, use you to show his power like he did with Israel to Egypt. He said, I want to, I want to show my power to Pharaoh and to Pharaoh to the whole world. Pharaoh said, I don't know you. And God said, no problem, I'm going to introduce myself to you. Then, one plague after another. One plague after another. Pharaoh finally said, I now know the Lord. You can go and worship him. <laughs> That's how it is. So God wants to use you to showcase himself. So he says, when trials come your way, do not, do not lose your joy. Rather, Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Don't be afraid of problems. We have a new generation of Christians who are scared of problems, who are scared of tri trials and temptations. Every little problem, then they start to draw back. There are some people who are looking for reasons why they shouldn't go to church. They have a little challenge. They don't want to come to church. Oh, because I had this problem. Oh, because I had little headache. Oh, because I had Qatar. Oh, because it looks as if it was going to rain. So I thought it was going to rain. That's why I did not come. Oh, he drizzled a little bit. Always looking for one excuse not to come to church. That's not the type of life God called him to be. God wants to use you to showcase himself to the world. And when troubles come your way, it's not supposed to be an excuse for you. Or rather, it's supposed to be an opportunity for God to demonstrate his love and his power to you and to the people of this world. So don't, don't make excuses anymore. Let God demonstrate his power to you. One more thing I want to talk to you before we, we wrap it up on this program. And this is very, very important. I want you to know that nobody can do the thinking for you. Nobody can make you joyful more than yourself. Happiness or joy is a choice. You don't only rejoice when, they, when everything is right, when everything is okay. In other words, you are expected to rejoice even when things are not okay. So if your husband is not behaving well, that does not mean you should not be happy. That does not mean you shouldn't be happy because your husband is not behaving well. If your wife is not behaving well, that does not mean, you know, you will no longer be. That means, you see, your happiness is not dependent on your husband or your wife. Your happiness is not dependent on how much money you have or how much money you don't have. Your happiness does not depend on the job, whether the job is okay or not, whether you're getting promoted or not. Your happiness does not depend on this. Is your happiness is connected to your life with Jesus. So whether these things are there or not, whether things are right or not, joy flows. Stay joyful. Stay happy. Don't let problems weigh you down. Rather than focus on the problem, focus on God. As I had to decease verse 3, he said, Thou will keep in perfect peace. He whose mind is stayed on thee. God expects you to stay your mind on him. His person, his personality, his character, his nature. God is unchanging in nature. God is unchanging in character. Even when you are unfaithful, He said He will not change. 
he will still remain faithful because he can't deny himself. That's your God. Faithful, trustworthy, reliable. He's a covenant keeping God, a God that does not fail to keep his covenant. He said, I will not violate my covenant. In another person, again, he said, I will not break my covenant. In another person, he said, I, I will not, um, you know, I will not, uh, 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 I will not forget my covenant. So God does not forget his covenant. God does not violate his covenant. God does not break his covenant. Three things. He won't break it. He won't violate it. He won't forget it. He won't forget it means he's always mindful that he has a covenant with you. He won't, he won't break it means he never cancels any covenant that he makes. And he's not going to start with you. He's unchanging the covenant. So I'm the Lord that changed that. He won't violate it means he will never go against his covenant. So such a person needs to be trusted. So that's why the Bible says, that will keep in perfect peace. He who stays his mind on you. So stay your mind on the fact that God does not break covenant. God does not forget covenant. God does not violate covenant. God keeps his covenant. Focus your mind on the fact that God will never disappoint you. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is reliable. He is trustworthy. He won't fail you. Bear this in mind always. And you can rejoice. 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 Rejoice when the going is good. Rejoice when the going is rough. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that your joy will always flow in the heart of my viewer today. Everyone who has been under the sound of my voice, I call out joy. I rebuke sadness. I rebuke depression from their lives. I command in Jesus' name that the joy of the Lord will well up within you and that you will always be joyful. That sadness will become a thing of the past in your life. That depression will never take hold of you. That no matter what you go through, you won't lose your joy, you won't lose your peace. In Jesus' mighty name. I pray for victory over all the challenges of life that you're facing right now. I command the problems to give way in Jesus' name. I pray for you that the Lord will show you mercy and favor and liberate you from all the bondages that you're struggling with. I release you from the captivity of the enemy and I command that on ungodly circumstance, that situation that harasses you, that troubles you, that depresses you, to live your life and never return again in Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you for visiting my brother and my sister today in Jesus' name. I believe that this program has been a blessing to you. And once again, I want to encourage you if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to give you a chance to do that now. And I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart as my Savior and as my Lord. I believe you died on the cross, was buried, and after three days you rose again for my salvation. You are now my Savior and my Lord, my King and my Master for the rest of my life. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen.
this program has been a blessing to your life and you would like us to continue to come to you, I want to appeal to you to prayerfully consider the support that you will give us. Write me, call. My phone number and email will be on the screen shortly. Let me know how you will want to support us so that this program will continue. Thank you very much, and I pray that God will bless you as you do this in Jesus' mighty name. No one supports the work of God without being blessed, and definitely we're going to be blessed. So until I meet you again next week, remember this. This is very important. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. God bless you, and see you next week. Same time, same station.